CNN, and I am here with the amazing Gretchen Carson. Hi, Alexandra. Thanks, Thanks so for much having for me. being here. Yeah. Um, so you may know Gretchen. Uh, I actually just called her a resident uh, glass ceiling smasher, which you seem to respond to. With, uh, <laughs> I'll add it. Can we put a hashtag in front Absolutely. of it? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. Great. Why not? Right. Um, Gretchen, in case you didn't know this, most people do. She left Fox in 2016 after accusing then chairman Roger Ailes of sexual harassment. She's been a trailblazer for Me Too ever since. Uh, but now she has a new cause, which is fighting for the rights of working women. Tell us a little bit more about it, Gretchen. Yeah, so we're kicking off today my partnership with March of Dimes, which has been instrumental in fighting for women and the health of babies and women and families for decades. Um, I happen to be on their board of trustees, and they came to me and, and asked if I would be interested in providing a grant from my Gift of Courage Fund to create a new initiative for moms all across our country from the grassroots level up to motivate and mobilize one another to have a voice on issues and policies that affect women, babies, and families in Washington, D.C. So today we are kicking off Momentum and the Gretchen Carlson Advocacy Fellows for the March of Dimes. And women from all over the country can apply to become one of the Gretchen Carlson. to fight for issues that are important to women and for our children. So this is a way to encourage women to come together and realize that they have a voice to do just that. Um, also, of course, only 20% of Congress is made up of women. And so that's been a stagnant number for the past couple of decades. Um, this is another way to let women know that their voice matters. And so maybe even some of these women who apply to become a fellow would eventually like to run for Congress. Um, we will be having uh, meetings throughout the year mm -hmm. where I will be there sharing my leadership skills and then we will have a conference in Washington DC once a year as well where these women can all come together um, formulate all of their ideas meet with members of Congress to push for issues that are important for women babies and families yeah I mean we were talking before we went live about the fact that Americans love their moms it's Mother's Day in a couple of weeks make sure to put that in your calendars yes. guys um, but we seem to treat them rather badly <laughs> in terms of uh, things like parental leave, um, America has a, a staggeringly high infant mortality rate compared to other developing country, developed countries, might I add. Um, why do you think we're so slow in that regard? What do we need to do to sort of get us back up to par? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't until recently that actually we were studying heart disease in women on women. Right. Right? Yeah. I mean, a lot of the prescriptions for women came from only doing studies on men. And it turns out that the number one... years ago it was still labeled a disability and you know there was no talk about really having the father have the ability to take time off as well yeah um, and so it was almost like the entire burden fell on the woman to figure out okay how am I gonna manage this new baby and go back to work and find child care that I can afford right so these are incredibly important issues for for women and for men to be concerned about as we want to try and keep women in the workforce I mean retaining women is one of the most important things that we can do. And if we can help along the way with maternity and child care, um, these types of issues are, are just crucial. What do you think it <clears throat> is that men need to know in a workplace? I mean, you mentioned there is a massive gender disparity right now in Congress. What do we need to tell them to sort of mobilize uh, men in that regard to care more about women's issues, family leave, um, rights of women who are pregnant in the workplace? 
what does it take, do you think? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I think I always, uh, you know, consider men who take their parental leave. Yes. Um, as, you know, that's great yeah. because it sends the right message that you care enough to do that, right? Men, unfortunately, are, are raised to be macho, you know, and, oh, well, we can handle anything and, you know, we'll, we'll stay at work. Um, and, and instead, we should be encouraging men to celebrate the idea that they're actually taking the time off for their child just in the way we would celebrate the woman taking the time off, right? It's about building that family bond. So I always celebrate men who decide to take that leave. I, I've noticed, of course, that it's young. if you can retain women, they provide so many extra dollars to the GDP and to our general economy. Um, if we just allow you know, women to, to have their children and then not come back into the workforce or make it difficult for them to come back into the workforce, it actually affects the bottom line of every one of our companies. So it's really, really important for men to understand that so that they promote women's issues as well. And by the way, we should not always call them just women's issues because Family life and family health is made up of more than just women, number one. Also, unfortunately, there seems to be kind of a negative connotation when we call something a woman's issue, right? Right. And third, I'll add, is that sometimes when men hear about a woman's issue, they go, oh, I don't have to pay attention to that, <laughs> right? Because right? that's, that's a woman's issue. I don't have to pay attention to that. And so, um, you know, specifically with all my work over the last 21 months on sexual harassment, especially, yeah. I've been trying to change the dynamic of, okay, it's not really a woman's issue, it's actually a man's issue, right? And in that way, we can um, involve them and invite them to be a part of the discussion. Same thing with this initiative today. Amazing. So the reason why I'm looking at my phone is because we have comments and stories flooding in for Gretchen. Um, here's a question. Do you have plans to go into politics? Mm. Well, <laughs> I've been asked to run for Senate uh, in the state of Connecticut where I live now. Right. Uh, it's not in the cards for me right now. Okay. Um, I actually had interest in my home state of Minnesota as well when Al Franken had to, to drop out. Yeah. Um, but I'm not moving back to Minnesota anytime. How can more women get involved in politics locally? Or how can more women get involved? I'm not sure what uh, Michelle means here, whether it's specifically politics or whether it's in your organization, but let's do both. Okay. So if you want to apply to become a Gretchen Carlson Advocacy Fellow through the March of Dimes, uh, you can just go to marchofdimes.com forward slash momentum. And it's very easy to apply. We're looking for women in all states. Um, so I hope that you will do that. Now, as far as politics, we've seen a huge surge yeah, in true. women over the last year and a half wanting to get involved politically. I mean, I think it's all been a part of this entire, what I call my own Be Fierce movement um, that moved into the Me Too movement that even moved into the Parkland students in Florida. I mean, I really believe that that um, this movement we're seeing about people wanting to have a voice and make a difference and realizing that their voice matters um, really started over the last year and a half. And it's not just about harassment. So that's why I'm so proud of this initiative too, because this is not about harassment, but this is about women having voices. And so it's a much broader scope. Now, we've seen so many women say, you know what, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run for office as well. Um, and even in my hometown in Connecticut, last November during the election, for local city council-like seats, I think it was 25 women who had never been involved in politics before, raised their hand and said, I'm going to get involved. And they were all elected. So it goes to show that even if you don't feel like you have the experience or you've never done this before in your life, mm -hmm. that taking that little risk can pay off 
so much. And I'm, you know, I think if my little town is a microcosm of what's going on across the whole nation, women are energized. But, um, or even, you know, anybody in HR uh, where existing policies aren't providing enough for her as a working mother or a future working mother. What's your advice to, to that woman who wants more and wants more support in her work environment? Mm -hmm. So I have been really advocating for people to form groups together mm. and go and speak to human resources, power for Power in numbers. It is power right. in numbers. So, you know, um, the name of my fund that I give grants to, specifically this March of Dimes one today, is called Gift of Courage. It's aptly named because as we give the gift of courage to one person, they give it to another and another and another. And we go from one person to forming collective groups and a stronger voice. So within the confines of your workplace structure, I would really advocate for women to come together and, and hold a meeting with HR if you don't have a great maternity policy or if you don't have a great place to you know, to um, pump, for example, after you have the baby. Right. I mean, a lot's changed since I even had my kids. Yeah, well, like 13 lactation years ago. rooms around yeah. when. Yeah, I used to when I was work, working in, in TV news, yeah. where where I was at the time. I mean, I had to go to the bathroom or close my door in my office and have everyone know what I was doing, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then I would put all the contraptments into a little paper bag and have to go to the bathroom and rinse them out, you know? And, and then where do you put what you just pumped? Not in the, you know, in the office fridge for everyone else to be looking at it, right. you know? And, I hadn't and even so thought about the all fridge. All these things, yeah, yeah. So I actually bought a little fridge <laughs> for my office and then I threw the whole power grid off um, at CBS News, sorry. Sorry, um, guys. When I plugged it in, it was such an old building and they were like, who? <laughs> Which makes it, which makes working even more challenging with balancing normal schedules and appointments, surgeries, etc. Um, what policy changes do you think are needed to help us bal balance the challenge of working, raising kids, not feeling guilty, and staying balanced in all of it? Well, I don't know about you. It already sounds like you're doing a great job. Yes. <laughs> I'm just going to say that right now. And, and I would love to have you become an advocacy fellow uh, because we do want women from all different experiences. Yeah. Right. And um, it sounds like you do have, have your hands uh, full. But listen, again, it's, it's, it's speaking up and becoming a part of this program and coming to Washington, D.C. and letting legislators know that these are the issues that are so important to women and to family life. I mean, let's include men again in, yes. in the discussion. Absolutely. So we have, um, oh, lots of women are saying they're applying. Okay. Uh, that's nice. Um, so Burgett says she wants these kinds of issues to be addressed more in daily life. How can people make that happen in their own lives? I mean, just talking about it comes to mind. I mean, mm. you mentioned calling your congressman or woman. Yeah, I mean, yeah. educating yourself on you know bills that are coming up that involve right. women's issues specifically. And also I would like to mention that it's not just on the federal level, it's on the local level too. Yeah. Um, I've been working a lot on in federal legislation for my sexual harassment bills. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I also advocate for people to go into their local communities and also at the state level, I'll be going out to California next month to do just that. So it's, it's really important to not only look high up at the federal level, but how you can become a part of your community and your own local laws and state laws as well. Um, so, so many people um, sharing their stories, all talking about balance. Um, we've got uh, another question here. I mean, flex hours is another flex really hours. important part. <gasps> you like, oh, well, you're not as hard of a worker because you have a child at home, right? Mm -hmm. This is how we need to try and change all of these 
myths. I mean, it's very similar, actually, to the harassment argument that I've been going through for the last year and a half. Yep. It's like changing the way that we perceive these issues and stop making um, the women looked at as the troublemaker or the person who doesn't work as many hours or whatever the case is, and lift them up and say, no, we want to help you with your children at home to become a better worker for us. Because in the end, that increases the bottom line for everybody. So flex hours, I think, are um, that is a, a central part of what these advocacy fellows will be working on as well. So let's just do a quick, quick list. What are the sort of like three top things do you think that working mothers need mm -hmm. right now, need more so, of? So, yeah, because we had a list of them here um, in this release. The flex hours, um, the maternity, um, the maternity leave, the postpartum support, mm. um, and I think those are the, the top three, as well as just maternal and infant health. So, for example, you mentioned the fact that the United States has an incredibly high you know, mortality rate. Yeah. I think people would be shocked to know that in such a developed nation. We consider ourselves to be the preeminent force, right? right. Um, and in the medical field especially. And yet, um, many of our states are having a failing grade with regard to mortality rates and also prematurity. I mean,